there's a man following me, so I'm just trying to get away. Getting really sick of the male attention. This is the fresh water I've seen all day. It is absolutely manky. The Atlas Mountains. Dry, hostile, almost inhospitable. Survival alone would be a challenge, but running across them, that had never been attempted, and probably for good reason. By contrast to the mountains they live in, the Berbers, or Tamazit in their language, which literally means free people, are amongst the kindest people I've ever met on this planet. Every day I'm shown incredible generosity and welcomed into their small communities that I run through. It's humbling. I'm also certain I'd be dead without them. I am feeling incredibly tender today. Um, it would be funny if it didn't hurt so much. Last night, I tried running after dark to try and make up some mileage because the days were too hot. Um, and don't laugh, it really hurts. But I fell off an eight foot ledge in the dark. Um, I can't believe I didn't break anything. It's such a stupid thing to do, but I am so delicate today. Um, so I'm not, I'm not running anywhere. I'm just kind of limping along this path and trying to keep my mileage up somehow. I'm not, not impressed with myself today. I don't really want to talk to myself right now. My bum hurts. So, not super stoked with how my sleep was last night, just as I got into my bivy, um, in this perfect spot on the top of a hill, um, of all things I hear an engine and a motorcycle followed by two off-road vehicles show up and a total of 10 guys from the Gendarmerie Royale, the police, um, they showed up and said you can't sleep here because it's not safe, poor little girl can't sleep outside. Um, and insisted that they would take me back to the village that I'd been in the day before. It took me 10 hours to <laughs> run away from. Um, so I dug my heels in. I wasn't getting in the vehicle. Um, and we did come to a compromise that they moved me to a Berber camp and told them that I had to sleep in their room with them because I couldn't be outside. And then I got up this morning and I've been locked in, literally locked from the outside to make sure that I spent the night in this room. Um, so I'm not in a really good mood with them. You're never gonna believe this. The first water I've seen that fits my whole body in. I'm definitely gonna celebrate by having a splash. I'm being pursued again. <sighs> that man has been chasing me for well over an hour now. I'm absolutely knackered, but um, I just went down this river valley and managed to change course and hide between the trees. 
and I can see him in the distance now going that way, so I've lost him. Um, but I truly don't feel very comfortable. I think I'm still another 12 kilometers to the next village. Not to say that I'll be safer at the village, but you know, I'm alone out here until then. So I'm just gonna stay out of sight. being chased again. This guy isn't as good a runner. It was funny to watch him try for a little bit. He's in unsuitable footwear. The police follow me closely every day. I'm regularly in the company of minders who track me either on foot or on motorbike. While their intentions may be chivalrous, the overbearing attention overwhelms me. I just want to run and be free to explore these incredible Tamazight communities without their control. So, just had another meeting with the gendarmerie. They want me to take a car with them for the next 15 kilometers because, get this, there's been no cell phone reception over the next section, so we just can't face that level of danger. My word, no cell signal. I can't wait. We will be in with take more hours than three hours on the mountains. Believe me. I'm fast, six. believe me. <laughs> <laughs> you have to trust me. If you take the mountains, will be six or seven hours. It's very okay. Difficult. After days of intense and increasing police supervision, I had enough. While I understood their reasoning for involving themselves so highly in my expedition, it began to interfere to a high degree, and the stress of constant gazes got to me mentally and emotionally. It's ironic that in the land of the Tamazit, free people, I never felt less free. It's my two week runversary! 14 whole days and I'm celebrating with a huge mountain pass. I've just climbed about 3,000 meters. And now I've got a huge descent, and I am super excited about that because downhill is the best part. So two weeks of running, just over 500 kilometers. I kind of hoped I would have done more by now, but I don't think I even ran that much in the first six months of this year, so I should be grateful for what I've got. So let's do the rest of this. Getting near the end is when the pain cave really sets in. Wounds and injuries are no longer coping. The dehydration can no longer be managed. I'm so exhausted that I need constant injections of sugar and caffeine. My legs, above all, are almost too knackered to hold me up. Almost. Downhill running is the best part of life! about 25 kilometers left. Um, my legs have gone full Bambi, which is to say they're not working at all. I'm just made of jelly. I just caught my first sight of Agadir and the Atlantic. So it's just a downhill run in the dark and then straight into the ocean and it's done. 
genuine traffic light. I haven't seen one of these in 23 days. I don't even know what to do. Run done. 22 days. Finally pushed the stop button on this tractor. Tamazit, free people. Traversing their mountains was an awesome pleasure. At times, I'd never felt less free in my life. But in their company, the stubborn love for their homeland and old ways of life was definitive freedom. <laughs>